Hello there, many thanks for joining us on JSN Live. It's wonderful to know you're right there watching us. And today, you are not going to disappoint as we're going to discuss something that is very dear to my heart. As you must have been following our show, we've been talking a lot about the Sustainable Development Goals, the awareness level among Nigerian youth, and especially how Nigerians can contribute to the implementation and achievement of these goals. I mean, 2020, uh, 2030 is just right by the corner. With me in the studio is a young man who's been doing a lot about the sustainable development goals globally actually just to ensure that it is implemented in Nigeria. It covers a lot of our daily lives, the welfare, everything, the air we breathe. Why then are Nigerian youth not very interested in this? We'll get to that conversation. But in the studio with me right now is Right Honorable Usman Shagari, thank you so much for being part of the program. Thank He's a speaker, much. National Youth Assembly of Nigeria. Thank you for being part of the program. Thank you very much, Mr. Joy. We'll go for a short break now, and when we come back, we'll get to the crux of the matter. It's a very important issue. The SDGs, the youth, how can we achieve it before 2030? We'll be right back. Like I said earlier, we're talking about the awareness level of the SDGs in Nigeria, the implementation. How interested are youths? Okay, again, in the studio is our very own Right Honorable Usman Shagari. Again, I thank you because it's not easy to get the speaker, the speaker himself of uh, the National Youth Assembly right here. So let's just get straight to it young people as important as these goals are a lot of people still think we're in the millennium <laughs> millennium <laughs> development goals unfortunately that's what a lot of people think but what would you say efforts around um why would you say it's not yielding the much uh, benefit that we should be seeing in that advocacy for government to implement these goals Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Joy. I, um, I appreciate having me here as uh, one of uh, as your, uh, 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 your guests here in the studio. Uh, before I can start, um, just like you said, most people are, are even thinking that these SDGs are the Millennium Development Goals. Let's start with the Millennium Development Goals. Those are goals that were set up by the UN from 30 to 2000 to 2015, 15. which uh, I think uh, at that time, we uh, most go those goals specifically are for developing nations that was that was why they set up those goals but after immediately after 2015 they decided to come up with this sustainable development goals these are global goals they are not only for, for developing Nigeria. nations they are for all countries in the world the set of these goals from 20 the agenda is from 2030 from 2015 to 2030, 2030. what are they going to achieve they are we have 17 goals for the sustainable development goal, which i always tell people these 17 goals are like almost the backbone of any living community exactly. uh, uh, society. Uh, society so it's very important that wherever we are doing let's see that we no matter what we align this we align what we are doing with these goals these goals can serve as blueprint not only for us for the government exactly if you uh, if you can follow these goals one after the other i assure you you are going to have a very a, a better society mm. so these goals are 17 goals which are very very important to any developing society one of the major reasons i think that uh, the up to now many people are not even aware about it is due to lack of uh, enlightenment about the, pro the, the 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 agenda especially in developing countries some people especially with youth we don't even i know many people that i spoke with they don't even know the sdgs Talk less of the, them telling you how many goals are the SDGs. They don't even know what's the SDGs, what are the SDGs, how many goals do we have, what are the importance, the, the, the time frame for the SDGs. They don't even know this, which is very disappointing. With the, these goals were set up, uh, what's it called, they are universal goal set mm. up from 2015 to 2030. We are in 2024. Many people are not even aware I of the rules. We just have so, uh, to so go. So, what's the what's the essence? Less than uh, six years. Just really? last year, just last year at the UN General Assembly, when they assessed it, when they assessed the situation, they said, "Is it uh, fifteen? Only fifteen percent of the goal is being achieved." When we have less than six six years to the goals, so uh, and if uh, just look at the statistics, you know that uh, the implementation level of this goal is very low okay now let, 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 let's talk about something more important a lot of people look at those goals and when you say life underwater nigerians who say it's life underwater is not relatable to us oh, yeah. there were several, several um uh, aspects of the goals that for some reason nigerians believe uh this doesn't really relate to us yeah, yeah. so why do you think that is and has it affected the uh, awareness around the goals when yeah. some people are already like oh now nah, it's very western yeah you know yeah, just like you said, I think it has because you know sometimes whenever you have that mindset that uh, is uh, that I don't believe believe to this part, mm. uh, belong to this part, or maybe I don't 
uh, really enjoy this thing, you won't have the zeal to participate, to participate in it. Or even share it, the information. Exactly, because we, they already categorize those goals as for the Western countries or something. But most of these goals, look at zero poverty, mm -hmm. zero hunger, edu quality education, good health and well -being. All this, All these goals are really for developing nations, like our nation. So I feel like even so, even if some of the goals are seen for as Western goals, at least look at some of the goals and see which one can you participate in. Exactly. They have we have they have seventeen goals. It's not like this seventeen goal you have to participate but in all, all, of, all of them. No, just pick the one that affects you directly. That's why they have this goal. Pick the one that affects you directly and see how can you help in the implementation of these goals. That's why uh, we decided to pick some of the goals and see how we the youth can contribute one after the other to the mm -hmm. implementation of these goals. Because we find out that the, uh, this, uh, the, the goals we pick are very critical to any developing nation in, uh, in, the, in the world. So that's why we decided to pick some of the, this point, point and concentrate to them. We are trying to show you that you don't have to contribute to uh, achieving all the 17 goals. No, contribute to anyone that you can. That's the only way. So, uh, when you talk about this life below water, even this life below water is not something that you can see does not affect... Uh, I mean, look, at yeah. look at the flood that is going on. Look at, uh, what do you call, uh, how fish are dying, especially in, in, in some part of Africa. You know, so all this is very important. We have to protect the planet. Mm -hmm. We have to protect those uh, living organisms underwater. So, it directly affects us whether we like it or not. So, what the only thing we have to do is to look at how we can implement this, how we can come up with solutions to achieve this. That's the only thing we have to do. Now, speaking about solutions, yesterday you had an event uh, and you themed it Youth in Support of Implementation of the SDGs. Yeah. How did that event go and why did you think it was necessary at this point to gather young people, stakeholders around uh, the, the, the advocacy for SDGs uh, to come together? Young people should, we are sh uh, you know, um, um, double efforts in achieving the goals um just like i i said before one of the major reasons that motivated us to, s to come up with this event though we have been advocating for SDGs even before this event but we decided to sit down and see okay so what's the problem we are facing now we really want you to participate in these goals okay how can we do that how can we contribute that we have 17 goals we don't have to pick all the goals which goals can we pick that's why we decided to pick five goals uh, zero hunger quality education mm -hmm. well-being climate action and uh, productivity we decided to pick this point because we feel like these goals directly affects Affect youth mm. and it's easier for them to start participate there. Mm. to start there this is like a blueprint for them let's start here and see what we can achieve later we can we, 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 we can we can pick out uh, other point that's why we decided to come up with this program and to invite to, uh, stakeholders to come and share their ideas about how they can do it like i told uh, people at the program the, our our program we decided to have that program the program is going to be a project driven program which means it's not a program that immediately after the program we will all leave and forget about it it's a program that whatever is said there we are going to make sure that we that's why we invited developmental partners first of all we decided to even partner with brazilian embassy embassy, embassy yeah. that, that that happened in the, in the, in the embassy. embassy they provided the location for us to have the program because the ambassador was really uh interested in the goal and he he feel like the best chance for, uh, for for him to participate is by this partnership so that's why we we decided to start with the brazilian embassy we have many developmental uh partners that we work with that were present at that event that we partner with in various ways like i uh, like we, uh, we said at the program th this point each point have its own challenges we we, 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 we we presented about the challenges and we prefer some of the solutions that we think we are going to partner with development partners to see that we implement those things even after the program we are going to partner with them to see that we sit down on the round table and see okay how are we going to implement this is what we discuss about the program at the program and the, here is how we want to implement it how can we partner with you to implement this things? that's why i always call this program a project driven program yes, we are exactly. going to start implementing this distance uh, inshallah very soon okay that's yeah. interesting that yeah. you are going to start implementing we'll get into the funding we'll get into government participation yeah, yeah, yeah. but first of all uh, what's most concerning for me is the awareness level and how we can ensure uh, from all angles how can we get this to young people so that when you're implementing some of these very laudable projects you have participation from youth who have the energy, energy to yeah. participate um one of the major uh our major, uh, our major, uh, what's it called? Uh, our major blueprint is number one is this SDGs, and another thing is that I always tell people you cannot do something alone. You have to partner with people. Partnership is the key. Uh, maybe our organization specialize in this uh, aspect, 
while the other organization might specialize in this as well. By the time we do partnership, we can easily achieve it. That's why we are going to partner with various foundations. Foundations, right. they have reach. Some of them have local reach, grassroots reach. reach. So it's very important to partner with this kind of people because by the time you partner with them, that's the only way you have the statistics, you have the people, you will meet the people, you will know exactly how to reach people, how to uh, how to implement this things. So that's where we started to pick this and we're going to also partner with state and local government authorities to see that to see how we can reach people directly because uh, we have passed the level where you are going to uh, where, where, where you are going to be reaching people indirectly. Mm. You have to make sure that whatever you are doing reach people directly. As people as people are the uh, what's it called as this affects the people directly. So if you are going to provide the solution, make sure the solution goes to the people directly. So that's why we feel like this uh, channel of using uh, partner uh, partnership with uh, NGOs and uh, partnership with uh, various uh, state and local government, we feel like it's going to have a long reach mm. to, for advocacy and other and rich implementation of these goals. Now let's talk this funding that I've been avoiding for a bit there because <laughs> I don't like to put funding forward. Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah. I don't like to put funding forward when it comes to um, what will benefit the majority of, of the people. Funding plays a crucial role, especially in the implementation of SDGs. Yeah. We've had government efforts, but of course government cannot do it all. Yeah. And uh, government um, efforts when it comes to some of achieving some of these goals are not targeted particularly to the goals. It's Good. just holistic in holistic. the sense that government wants to give uh, amenities to um, her people so well if it does achieve one good for us but this is a an intentional targeted goals so how can young people contribute so that the funding look at let's speak first top of my head is zero hunger how can young people who are already suffering i mean the, the statistics for unemployment is so high in nigeria how can young people contribute to ensure implementation um, just like you said, funding is very critical to this kind of project because mm -hmm. nothing you cannot do anything without appropriate funding. That's why if you look at the statistic of the SDG, almost everything is funding, funding, funding. funding How you and can inject money to see that they implement this because they know without funding nothing can be happen, nothing can be possible. So uh, wha one of the major challenges we are facing is the is this issue of funding because just like you said, already in Nigeria, when you look at the statistics, even without looking at the statistics, you know people are really unemployed, unemployed and people are really essentially youthful age so those kind of people are uh, mostly when it, when it comes to this kind of programs and this kind of implementation they no, normally feel weak because they feel like they don't have anything to contribute they don't have the money the resources or something to contribute you know when, whenever you are talking about programs like this uh, projects like this though funding is very important but I feel like um, awareness about it is very important too less people know about it you cannot do something that you don't even know about it mm. so no matter how small if you can contribute to share the awareness especially now we always use so social media mm -hmm. social media is very important, important. it plays a very 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 uh, vital mm -hmm. role to the to any uh, society so this social media if we can just Harness change and yeah. harness the, the potential, potential from there yeah. and inject it to this SDG. I assure you, many people will be, uh, will be aware of this things and they will do they will, they will do excellently uh, well in terms of the implementation. So another uh, 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 the issue of funding, Kuma. When you talk about funding, this is a project that whenever we talk about it is something that we want to do either nationally or uh, nationally or globally. Mm. So globally, you will need a lot of funding. So the only way me, we will feel like it's going to help us is just like I said by that f partnership. There are various uh, initiatives that you can partner with. Come up with initiative, look for uh, uh, developmental partners to see that you implement those initiatives. We have many initiati uh, initiatives that we can come up with we have many partners that are really willing to work right. some state government are really trying some state government really help in the implement that's why most state government if you go you will have sdg office yeah, exactly but exactly. just like you said most of those SDG uh, office. sdgs office they don't really focus exactly on the the main issue they don't really inject their resources to the main issue some divert the resources to other places if they can really focus and make sure that maybe they partner with organizations like us at state level to see that the uh, what's it called the implement yeah, this i assure you they are going we are going to have a a, a, a longer reach in Sokoto state i know we have sdg office even mm -hmm. at national level we have ssa to the president SDG. Mm -hmm. so if we can just harness that potential you know and uh, and, and see what's it called we, we the, there's 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 uh, what's it called the uh, well, there's connection between this the, the national level and the state level in terms of the implementation 
the SSA to the president of SDG make sure that, uh, what's it called the office is partnering with state office to see that there's connection between them and there's uh, the help in the implementation either at state level and at local government level. I assure you it's going to be a very, very, it's going to play a very important role. That funding is very, very big, uh, very big, very yeah. big issue. So the best way we can do it is by partnering either with the state government, various NGOs, organizations do. But in terms of pe first persons, like I always say, let them raise, let them help in contributing Re contributing to raising the awareness you know you don't have to contribute financially you can contribute, contribute in any, any yeah. you can see someone that have that don't have anything but if you go to social media you have influence so if you can help use that your influence to help in the advocacy of distance before you know it, she can come but are you youths really ready for it because i mean when you listen to a lot of the content contestants that just in the just concluded election general elections and they tell you that to even gather young people if for a town hall to have engaging conversations about what I plan to do for you. You would, when you're done with, after speaking all the English, they'll be like, what's in it for us? Um, I mean, are you not going to drop something? Drop so something. there's that attitude. I don't know if it's me. I don't know if I'm being too harsh on young people, but there's that attitude of, I must get gratification for everything Every I put time. my energy on. Do you face that when advocating for the SDGs? We always, we always face that. It's it's uh, like something that you face it every day. You know, most people feel like whatever they do, especially with the young uh, young generation, whatever we do at the end of the day, they will be waiting for some gratification that they will go home with. You know, but the main issue is that when you look at all these things that's going on, is because of the level of poverty oh, that's poverty. in Nigeria. So which yeah. one do you put first? Attack <laughs> the poverty, they should join in and attack the poverty or help them get the poverty out of the, out of the, uh, as a problem. They and can do, them they they can do both. They can do both, but I feel like let them come together to fight this poverty. Mm. That's the only thing. Especially when you look at the Abuja environment, for example. Yeah. If you're having a program in the city, maybe for example in Wusetu, someone that's in Gwagwalda, you can't expect them to attend the program like that. Mm. Like that's why most of you them, they come have to mobilize them because of the transportation fee and other things that's why most of them after immediately even if they come they will have to expect something because they cannot just come from Gagwala to Wusetu and finish program of two hours or three hours and go back to Gagwala like that they don't have anything they don't have even the transportation exactly. so all these things are key factors that you can look into and you know the reason people are really behaving like this but I know still we still have some youths that really that are really participating I know that from, not even from the, the, uh, our last program, I know that from even our previous programs, we, Im we invited many people and they came because they were really ready, ready, to, pa ready to participate. Mm. You know, so all these things, at least, they are, you know, anything, you have the negative aspect and, and you and have the, the positive, positive aspect. So you have to look into both aspects and see what we, we uh, and weigh them and see which one is better. To me, Gaskia, I feel like youths are really ready to participate. It's just that let them have the room and let them have the synergy right. to, to participate that's the only thing now in international organizations even the un itself has done a lot of funding when it comes to several aspects of the sdgs would you say that those funding have really helped uh, or, or we are seeing any sort of um, um you know any sort of uh, facelift when it comes to certain part of the of, of achieving the SDGs or is it like every other funding that comes in we don't see any tangible result that, that that's like like I said before uh, mostly uh, when it comes to funding you know Nigeria we have issues in terms of accountability and all this sense you know UN are really doing a lot you can look at their website and see UNDP you will you'll see exactly the amounts they are spending on SDGs every year in Nigeria not even in the world in Nigeria you have the statistics mm. you know but the problem is that most of the distance the issue of funding whenever you talk about funding people feel like the funding is not going directly to the beneficiaries that's the problem we have the office of SS, SSE to the president of SDGs you know I know they partner with UNDP to see that uh, they implement this sense do even UNDP they partner with some organizations Insurance to well. make sure that they implement this you know but the mutual thing is that now we are we have passed the level of the indirectly uh, was the correction people whatever you need to be doing exactly make sure that it reached people directly to the affected people. There are various affected communities. There are various people that really need this, really need the funding. So well, me, I'm only going to advise them to please um, pay attention to implementation 
uh, ways. Pay attention to, uh, they should make sure that whatever they are injecting goes to the people directly. How? Because the auditing of these things, uh, some, some, sometimes it takes a longer time at that point. And yeah. we have not seen prosecutions per se. You know, and it keeps giving the country a bad name. I yeah. remember um, um, the, the, the statistics you just mentioned. And when the, you, you know how much has gotten into the country for the rehabilitations here and there, it's startling. And as in, sp in spite of that, we don't see tangible results. Yeah. So how can we, how can government regulate, um, especially the humanitarian space, without it looking like government influence? You know Thank how we are, we, are very, yeah. <laughs> we are very skeptical about yeah, when yeah, government yeah. puts their hand in things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, like I said, there are various ways. Uh, UNDP is a, uh, let me say, a body under the UN, you know, that uh, manage these SDGs and all other yeah. things. So I feel like uh, the best way is, uh, do you know, when government really want to help, they know how to do it. You understand me? They know exactly how to follow the channel. They know how to do it without uh, people even knowing that they are interfering. Mm -hmm. You understand me? We have this, uh, just like I said, the office of the SSE or to the president, they partner with UNDP. Let them make sure that all the partners of those UNDP are really submitting reports to exactly what is going on on SDGs and exactly how they are implementing. And w uh, let them look at the statistics. Is this thing really benefiting the people directly? You understand me? Let them follow statistics. Maybe they can set up a committee to review that. I, I feel like uh, we, we, we have passed the level now where we, we, we will just have people in the office. Well, no, let them set a committee to monitor every implementation of sdg in nigeria let them set it that committee we have six years now okay let them set a committee the committee should be in partnership with various ngos in partnership with undp in partnership to the with the sa ssap to the president in partnership with even ministry of youth let them so set that committee the only work of that committee is to make sure that they liaise with this body to making sure that everything that is being spent goes to the right channel and affect the people directly with this kind of committee i feel like we can start seeing uh, a reasonable result and make sure that this committee everything is doing people are really giving detail of the committee and let people let the committee be accountable for whatever they do you understand me mm -hmm. so this is very critical i feel like the committee will really help to the implementation of this kind of thing mm. they will make sure that whatever is going whatever is whatever is happening reach the people at the proper time at the proper location you understand me so the committee uh, cha the, the committee function the sole committee function is just to monitor the implementation that's all the committee is going to be a committee in what's it called a committee just like as a comprising of this undp office of SSA and the ministry of it and other ngos the only the sole their only sole function is to monitor this implementation nationwide right but a lot of people work in silos it seems like everybody is, is unilaterally doing their thing this one is doing their thing and so i'm happy that you say you will bring people together you bring organizations that are working together but do you think it will be tough because it seems we are nigerians everybody wants their name written in, exactly. this, in the sun of time so do you see this as a, a walk in the park or you are ready for having to convince organizations to be part of you know part of the whole in achieving with all the strength you have yeah uh, it's going to be uh, it's even tough not it's going to be tough it's even tough i oh, know so because we have started right. that you know just like you said we nigerians mostly prefer whatever happened you know you see mm -hmm. either my name or your name on it it doesn't have to be like that as long as maybe you are there you participate on that shake it that's all so i feel like what what we what we need to do like that, that i always believe in partnership i always believe in that because i know that no one man can do something alone, uh, alone you cannot do it you can you go as far you, you, you go try. as far you know so that's why i feel like whatever we want to do let's see even if it is tough you might come with partners uh, to partner with you even if you are not interested go and look for another partner I assure you, if you really have good intention of, of, of doing that, you will, you will find a partner that will be really interested in working with you. We have started that there are various ways. That's why if, even before we start partnering with, uh, what's it called, uh, foundations, there are various youth organizations we partner with. We have many youth organizations in Nigeria, among which most are not even active. So we feel like, okay, as youth organizations, what can we do? Let us come maybe from a forum or something that we can sit together talk about this issue and see how we can help in the implementation it doesn't have to be only national assembly of nigeria no let us have a forum that we can come all, all together 
as youth bodies in Nigeria to sit down and discuss critical youth issues. issues. So this this is very important. I know do I do I know it's going to be very hard, but we are still working on that. And by God's grace, we are going to have that forum by God's grace to make sure that we sit down and be uh, and help in this kind of issues unfortunately when you talk about youth a lot of people roll their eyes and shock that we, we even see that um, um rifts within little youth organizations and associations uh, so have would you say that they have positioned or they are poised to actually achieve in in coming together for the good of the society yeah yeah some some of them like i told you they are interested you know some of them is just to reach out to them once you reach out to them have a discussion with them exactly share ideas we both have our goals i might have my goals you might have your own goal but by the time we, we come, together. come together we can see how we can align those goals together and achieve one thing right. you know so that's that's very important if we can just reach out sit down have a discussion i assure you we are going to reach a common goal okay thank you it's time to go for a short break when we return we'll still be discussing the sdgs for some education is everything others will say job creation and others will still say just put food on the table for others it's climate change but what is it for you we'll be right back to know what the government or stakeholders should start concentrating on so that as much as we can we can see a facelift in the faces of nigerians we'll be right back this is still joyous on your life Welcome back from that. I hope you enjoyed that short break. Now we are back and back in full. Achieving sustainable development goals in Nigeria requires the collective effort of all segments of society, especially the youth. And that's what we've been discussing on today's edition of Joy Asana Life, how youth can contribute to achieve sustainable development goals. Well, a lot of people would say that the young people want access to education, quality education. Some will say it is just jobs, just ensure that young people have jobs. Others will say, look at our climate. But what should the government look really, really close at as the low-hanging fruit to ensure that when you do this, the ripple effect would get to the implementation of others without necessarily concentrating on everything? In the studio, the person who's been discussing all of this with me and who will continue until the end of the program is uh, Right Honorable Usman Shagari. He is the Speaker National Youth Assembly of Nigeria. What would you say, first of all, your favorite goal of, of them all is? I know you picked five during your event, yeah, yeah. but what's your favorite of, of them all? Um, to be honest with you, at this moment, I can say uh, no poverty is very important to us. Whenever we talk, the number one goal of the agenda is very important because uh, lo look at just the environment we are in. Many people are really suffering. Mm. Many people uh, lack basic necessities, which is very critical to us. That's why even the, uh, the crime rate is keep increasing because of the poverty level. So wh 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 whenever you want to have a safer uh, community, you have to make sure that people have the basic amenity. People really are uh what's he called are not in a, in 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 the hung uh, are not hunger, hungry hungry right. exactly so this is very important that's why we decided to pick it though i still have uh, i still like the uh, quality education because of the level of the environment we have nigeria we have a population of almost 200 above 200 million people mm. which among the, this population almost 70 percent are below 35 the youthful age so i feel like uh the best uh, it's very important that Right from the grass, uh, right from the ground level, we have quality education for our citizens. Because an educated person can never be com co compared to an, an uneducated person. So it's very important. We pay attention to the ed educational system. We pay attention to everything in terms of education to mm -hmm. make sure that we educate our younger younger generation that are just growing. So it's very important to have that because I know that I'm uh, what's it called? I'm a beneficiary of education. education I right. know, I know, I, I know this, and I know it's very important to our people. So whenever you are educated, you have a higher, even a higher chance of uh, getting job, a higher chance of many things of so contributing positively like someone society. like like they always say education should not be uh, what's it called uh what's it called a luxury education mm. is should be a, a necessity. necessity necessity so it's like everyone deserve everyone should have be educated it's very important it's very important once once government can pay attention to this some state government are really trying once the federal government can pay attention to this to make sure that all our local schools and uh, uh, all our what's it called state schools you know are really sufficient to uh, to accommodate this our growing population i assure you that uh, in the next 
10 to 15 years, we are going to have vibrant youth that can mm. even outshine us. Exactly. So it's very <laughs> important to pay attention to that. Yeah, it is like. important, but when you now look at the data statistics of about 20 million Nigerian, Nigerian children <coughs> out of school at the moment and no targeted uh, uh, um, initiative to draw them back the food uh, school feeding program I for one didn't see that as <laughs> having achieved the goals because it was recorded that even though some people were serving food others were serving I don't know there were the reports of biscuits being given to children it wasn't even the food it was supposed to have nutritional value it had this, you know you remember exactly. the campaign yeah, for yeah, school campaign, feeding yeah and all of that but uh, we, we are also seeing that um, the initiative government have done to pull children into school is not necessarily um, um, uh, uh, succeeding so what would you say another initiative can be so that this 20 million that is recorded can come back to the four walls of the uh, schools uh, just like you say we have almost 20 million out of school children and uh, the government is uh, coming up with school feeding program you know all these things this school feeding program are for the people that are already enrolled, uh, uh, enrolled in, school. in school so what about the other 20 million people what is going to happen even the that? attraction i, I was I, I read a report of uh, an investigative journalist that actually went from state to state to see to monitor the school feeding some children will just come when it's time to feed to feed and when they finish <laughs> eating exactly. they go back home it's like they went for lunch for lunch exactly <laughs> because they are they are hungry they really need the food so they will just come she can and go and most of the contractors are even exploiting the program exactly. you know, they are just there just to show camera that we are giving food. Doing, after that come they will be given any food you any ordinary food they just like you said biscuit sharing biscuit to uh, small small children mm. what are, what, what nu nutrition nutritional they, value will, will, will it add to them so it's very unfortunate mm -hmm. so i feel like uh there are many ways me i have to, to me personally i feel like these children can be brought back to school First of all, the educational system is ni in Nigeria is just uh, somehow. So I feel like when you look at the system, especially at primary school, uh, what's it called, secondary school, even at tertiary uh, uh, level, the t t fees and the what's it called, the tuition fees keep increasing. Before you are paying this, and now you are paying this. So <laughs> that's why we have many out of school children. They must go this semester, this this time, next mm. time they might not afford to go that. When you keep uh, when you keep the tuition fee aside, look at the even what's it called what's it called the materials to go to school, to school. the mobility to go school to, to 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 school. For example, now a father is unemployed without job, without car, without anything. How will he carry his children to go to, to school? school. Yeah. So all these things are factors that you have to consider: transportation, mobility, everything. This is these are very important. That's those because they are factors that contribute to those people mm. not being in. Before school. we let go of education, which is a very important one, I would like to ask: uh, Is it that we are, are embracing too much of the Western style of education? Must it be come to the classroom before you learn? Must it be Mondays to to Friday. Fridays must it be on certain times? Mm. Can we can we coin it and make it peculiar to what works for Nigerians? That's or do you think we should leave it the that's way? That's that's why even our system, then the whole system is not working for us. Because the system is not our own. We are using Western system for Nigeria. How can you do that? You understand? That's why many things are not working properly. You have to look at it's just like business. You before you can start business, you have to look at your targeted uh, mm -hmm. customers mm -hmm. to know exactly how you can provide better service for them. I know we are using Western system, but there are some things that really need to change. Really need to change. Let's pe let let us change it to fit our current atmosphere. Mm. So I feel like they, they are very uh, they are very important. Let us look at those ways. Just like you said, must you come to school from Monday to Friday? Must you do this? Must you do this during Corona times? All of us were just reading online. Didn't and studying did not end. Nothing, did not, nothing end. At least we, 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 we did something. If to say maybe we are going to follow the conventional system, what will happen the whole? What will happen the whole year? We won't do anything because no school. Mm -hmm. So there are some ways that we have to be innovative. We have to look at the system, the current system. We have to look at the atmosphere. We have to look at the environment. Just because this system is working in Western countries doesn't mean that it will work in Nigeria. Just because this state have this system doesn't mean that it will have this system. Each state, they have their own issues. Some state, maybe their only problem is maybe transport mobility issue. Mm. Some state, what's it called, food. Some state, uh, what's the infrastructure. You know, all these things are things to look at. So, I feel like 
whatever you are going to do look at the targeted beneficiary of that and see exactly how you are going to come up with something that will suit them that's all right now speaking about the corona the, uh, technology has proven to be another very vital tool mm. while um, you just said we can create more awareness using technology as just part of it some of the solutions that we need uh, in in combating hunger in combating poverty and in combating illiteracy could be in technology do you think there is something that government can do stakeholders can do just to ensure that these young people who are very innovative i mean the nigerian young person is very innovative, innovative yeah. and very technologically savvy so what can be done so that we would accelerate the implementation of the sdgs using technology you know just like you said nigerian people are very intelligent just look at the study our iq is very high compared to other world, other countries we we are very intelligent everywhere we go nigeria will always outshine everyone you know so this iq let us harness this thing this potential to put it in technology sector you know one thing i have to say for all going to this 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 point technology whenever you talk about technology technology, technology first thing that will come to your mind is in, uh, internet mm. without this internet how can we access this technology we have many initiatives we have many things we have to thank uh, what you call the Ministry of Communication. They have did well in terms of internet Ensuring penetration in Nigeria because right. you know, ten years ago we are not exactly. Here. If you go to a what you call your village, you don't have internet. Mm -hmm. But now you must go to your village with 4G internet access, internet, right. which is very important. Some mm -hmm. villages they even have broadband connectivity, broadband, yeah. broadband, which is very because very important. When you look for internet, walking exactly around. Exactly walking around. I know that because I travel, so I travel. I have seen many villages with 4G connect connectivity. So they have tried because without these things, there, there are no way we can even access the internet. So the broadband penetration is very, very good. They are really trying. So mm. they should just keep it up to make sure that everywhere, uh, it reaches everywhere, you know. So uh, secondly, the issue of this harnessing technology, I feel like it's very important. And we, the youth, can really harness the technology. With the proper tools, with the proper training, with the proper uh, structure, we are going to do excellently well in every sector we are in. Okay in every sector so i know that let us just have this in uh, this proper structure let us outline uh, exactly how we want the youth to contribute and i assure you they are going they to, will, they will to go, of they course will, they will, they mm. will. Yeah. so climate change you want the youth to join hands and put a voice to um uh, implementation of the sdgs but the climate change possesses a significant uh, threat to sustainable development. I mean, we see the floods that often happen, which is because we, our, our, you know, how we behave when it comes to how we don't recycle we our don't plastic. Don't, don't. It goes and clogs up our waterways. We see the flood that goes on, and this flood also affects uh, agriculture. Uh, it affects properties. Those who were poor before, if you are affected by flood you become even poorer. poorer so while certain uh, aspect like climate change does affect everybody but do they have do you have the capacity as a young person or as a group of young people to actually curb climate change in your bid to implement sdgs um i always feel like you can always do you can always do your best you can always play a role in every sector right in everything you know climate change is very critical is very important you know and the the world are trying to make sure that we imp we, we, we we implement this climate change mm. that's why just a few months back we have this cop 28 which mm -hmm. was uh, hosted in dubai right dubai. With where world leaders came together to make sure that they help in making sure that we implement this climate change issue and we find a way we mitigate the climate change so it's very important and i know we can play a vital role look just go to your what's it called areas and communities and look at how people are really acting when you some areas if you enter trash everywhere mm -hmm. you know people are really not helping some trash are even on the streets some people will just be waiting for government to come and pack all that that trash you can play your own, own role you can play as uh, what's it called uh, uh, what's it called we have our legal state chapter uh, at the national Youth assembly of nigeria there was a time they doing the international youth day they t called me they said they want to organize something but they feel like hey, it's not uh, it's not going to be uh, better for a uh, feasible for them to just organize a program let us uh, let them do something i advise them to do something uh something uh, uh, some something something feasible something that people can, can see, see right. they went ahead and organized one clean up environment they enter market with their big one oh, i think i read about exactly. that exactly yes, they were picking that. trash picking they were trash. picking everything yeah, about that. before you know not only them many people, people, started, joined, people joined them to pick the trash they swept everywhere they swept everywhere 
so you can see this kind of initiative are very good you can help in every way if you if you if you want you only you alone can help come with your basket start picking trash i assure you before you finish someone Somebody will join, will join you. you so this is very important you know you can you don't have to wait for the government to implement some people when you talk about climate change they will be talking about emission all this <laughs> exactly. like, no climate change start from, from you from you how do you how do you dispose, feel, exactly dispose your yeah. distant trash how do you dispose all this things there are some people that normally come to this trash uh, site and pick bottles pick all this and to recycle it you know i feel like there should be enlightenment about that you know mm -hmm. let people know the effects those uh, uh what's it called bottles uh, have. Uh, have on uh, on the environment unfortunately i also had a conversation with somebody who said he followed government you know government wants to do it all mm -hmm. they, 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 it's not it has not given space to private sector to come do recycling come do this however um, we are afraid of the scavengers because there have been some they are not regulated and there have been some who are said uh, to come for information uh, they want to pick information and there is security risk. But when government does this picking, eventually they still put it in some dump site and it is not properly disposed exactly. of. So is this awareness, should, this, should, should we start the awareness with government first of all? Because it seems like they don't even know the proper they way don't. to dispose plastics. If it's you. unfortunate. They showed me pictures of the dump site of the government where government officially calls it dump site there are no that. recycling plan for those things and everything is dumped there at some point you burn some oh my goodness and we're talking about environmental degradation and how we can do better this is very unfortunate guys yeah it's very unfortunate unfortunate just like you said the enlightenment might, might even start that with the government. government because okay for example let's say that we are we are, we are throwing our trash government is coming to pick it up and go go mm. to keep it disposed somewhere and this i feel like the best way that they can encourage us to participate is by showing our ex ex example by serving as an example to 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 to, to the Honorable people Bashi, uh, um, Shagari, you have really we really have run out of time so for young people listening to us right now what are your final thoughts on what would you like to encourage them with um i think one of the things i would like to say is just whatever you want to do or however you want to contribute just start no start somewhere. just start somewhere no matter how small just like business whenever you want to study business you don't have to wait for cash to come in or something just, just start, start where you start are. from your you no know, start from your home mm. before you know it you will achieve something you don't have to wait for government or you have to wait for someone to come and help you start anywhere I assure you, God will help you to continue. Exactly. As long as you put your thoughts in it, you would get help. Thank you so much, uh, Right Honorable Usman Shagari, for being part of the program. Thank you very much, Miss Joy. Yes. So we've been having a wonderful conversation discussing youth contribution to achieving the SDGs. I hope you've learned a thing or two and decided or pumped up and inspired to do something about the implementation of the SDGs. But this is where we close the curtain on today's edition of Joy Asoye Live. We'll be back next week with so much more. So do have a restful weekend. Thank you very much.